everyone and welcome back to another vlog. So today's vlog is going to be all about me revising and hopefully I'm going to maybe teach you something and hopefully it's going to help me remember all of this information for my exam. So basically right now this is, let me see if I can show you, this is me, this is all my work, my flashcards, I've got my laptop, I've got everything ready. It's Sunday, it's my day off. I am due to go out at about 12 and it's now half past 10. So I'm gonna spend the next hour and a half using my time wisely and revising and just making a few extra flashcards. So, so far I have got about 28 flashcards all together. I think that's two or three, one, two, three, three and a half sections of the exam. So it is actually it's exactly half of the exam that I've done on flashcards. I'm just going to go through with you one of my flashcards to show the amount of detail that I have to try and remember for this exam and hopefully not make you panic if you're at BCU in second year worrying about this exam like I am. I'm really sorry. Please don't worry. You'll be fine. Just make sure you revise. So my first flashcard is respiratory rate. So basically we have to, there's a section in the exam where you have to explain every single physiological reason why my lady Betty with her MI and acute kidney injury has a high respiratory rate. It's a lot, it's a lot of writing. It's two and a half hour exam, may I remind you. So here we go, are you ready for this? I'm sorry for stumble and I'm sorry about the lighting because the sun keeps going in and out of clouds so the lighting might sort of change sorry about that guys so here we go so betty has a high heart rate no a high respiratory rate that's not starting well is it high, so betty has a high respiratory rate of 32 this is due to her slipping down the bed which has resulted in an increase in venous return to the heart thus increasing preload um, the left ventricle cannot cope with the increase in pressure which equals a backflow of pressure to the lungs and pulmonary vessels which increases their permeability, which results in fluid leaking into the interstitial space. And then that results in an impaired gaseous exchange. And that's because the fluid sits between the alveoli and the capillaries. So if there's fluids in between those two things, the oxygen is struggling to get in and the carbon dioxide is struggling to get out, if that makes sense. So the, the, the CO2 levels are gonna rise and then the O2 levels are gonna drop, basically. So then, also, not only that, her, she, it's also due to the reduction of contractility, I can't say this word, I'm really sorry, of her left ventricle, which means um, stroke volumes reduced, cardiac output is reduced, which means a reduction in O2 delivery to the cells. Because if you haven't got the blood physically going to the cells, um, because the blood carries oxygen, it's not going to be a benefit it's not going to deliver to the cells. Does that make sense? Oh my God, I've got myself confused. So you've got a reduction in blood because of the heart not working properly. Basically, it's not strong enough to pump the blood around the body. So if there's a reduction in blood, there's a reduction in oxygen because oxygen binds to hemoglobin. So if there's a reduction in that, the cells aren't being perfused by oxygen, which means, um, well, you, your cells need oxygen to survive. They need um, oxygen for ATP and energy so you're, it is going to result eventually in cell death if this continues. So anyway, so because of the lack of oxygen the cells are converting from aerobic to anaerobic respiration and in anaerobic respiration your cells don't need oxygen so it switches to that but because of that an increase of a product, a product called pyru, pyruvate um, is produced because there's there's no oxygen. So, and as a result of the pyruvate being reduced, a lactic acid is produced as a waste product. So then, because there's um, this buildup of lactic acid in the blood, it's making the blood acidic. Um, and because of the level of acidity in the blood, that's also knocking off the oxygen from haemoglobin because ox it's, it's physically not allowing the oxygen to combine because it's too acidic for the oxygen to combine with the blood. Um, so that's another reason why there's um, a high respiratory rate because of the, obviously the, um, then the um, peripheral chemo receptors detect the drop in O2 
And meanwhile, the central chemo chemo receptors in the medulla um, detect the increase in CO2 in the blood because because of all this that's happening, the, the, the CO2 is increasing, the O2 is decreasing. So the chemo receptors are picking it up. They're working together. And then they send sort of afferent and efferent signals via the phrenic nerves and the intercostal nerves. Then they send signals to the diaphragm, to the intercostal muscles, which increase to increase the rate, the rate, the depth of um, respiratory rate. So then that's going to increase the O2 levels in the body and expel the, the CO2 that's building up to sort of balance the pH that's just gone down, dropped because of the level of acidity that's in the blood now because of lactic acid. <sighs> and is that it? Actually, that's it. I've done. Yeah. So. Maybe I'm getting this. Maybe I'm remembering. <laughs> I think I'm going to be okay <laughs> for respiratory rate. But that is the, the, the amount of detail. I, and that's just one thing. I have to then go into heart rate. I have to go into O2 saturations. I have to go into urine output, why she's got a low urine output. And I have to literally go into detail for every single one. Not only the physiology, but I need to explain things like, so for heart rate, her heart, heart rate's high but she's on a medication called bisoprolol. I can't say it, I'm really, I'm really bad. I'm so glad I don't have to speak this exam because I would be out, I'd be out because <laughs> I can't say these words. But she's on this medication, which should in theory reduce her heart rate. So if she wasn't taking that medication, in theory, her heart rate would be much higher than it already is, which would be really bad. So you have to take that into consideration as well whilst, whilst analyzing her heart rate because it's already at 96, so it's already increasing. But because she's on this medication, it is lower. So you have to sort of explain that side of things as well, if that makes sense. So yeah, so that is literally what I'm doing right now. Right now, I'm actually going through the medication. So I've started with aspirin. I've done my flashcards. Like I said, I've done the 28 flashcards for respiratory rate, heart rate, O2 sats, all of that. Now I'm going into medications. So I've started with aspirin and basically you have to explain what aspirin does and why it's specific for Betty. So I've got aspirin, inhibits platelet aggregation, therefore reduces clots. Simple, right? I don't know if I need to explain more than that, but I might actually just look into it and go into the, I think it's the COX-1. I think it inhibits COX-1. I need to look, it's either COX-1 or COX-2, I cannot get this wrong. I'm sure it's COX-1, the COX-1 enzyme, and then because it inhibits that, it's not creating the sort of fibrin mesh and the clots that it should, something like that. Anyway, so Betty is on this because she's got coronary heart disease and she's at risk of plaque ruptures and clots forming, which could cause her a further MI and a stroke. So that's basically why she's taken that aspirin. And that's all I've got to. So I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna, I've got all these blank flash cards, which I'm gonna use up, no doubt. And my wall is gonna be plastered. I'm gonna cover my wardrobe in these flash cards. And hopefully I'm gonna smash this exam because right now I'm not gonna lie, I'm stressed. I'm really scared for this exam. And I'm hoping I know enough and I'm hoping it all comes back to me on the day. But actually, just explaining that to you then with the respiratory rate, actually, I feel confident in some as aspects because I actually knew all that. I didn't have to look at my flashcards much. So maybe I am getting it and maybe I'm going to be okay. Fingers crossed. So yeah, so I'm going to keep going and I shall see you later, guys. I'm at work. Doing my revision. Don't tell matron. <laughs> so I've done some flashcards. And this. Thought it might help if we use colouring diagrams, um, but we'll see. Tomorrow I'm at uni. I'm going to meet up with my uni friends and we're going to have a revision session. So I shall take you all with me and see you tomorrow. So it's now Friday. I've had a really busy week of revising solid every single day. And I just wanted to finally, on this last day, because I'm giving myself a weekend off, I'm going to take my A4 paper and I'm going to write out the 30 mark question. Um, I'm going to do it without looking at my notes, without looking at my flashcards and just judge how long it's taken me to write all of that out. And 
am I getting all of the information in and what I need to work on basically is what I'm trying to gauge because I've got three weeks and I need to find out how to narrow this down because I've, I've said this before in the exam the exam is two and a half hours so I don't want to spend too much time writing and lose marks because I haven't finished the exam so this is what I'm trying to gauge now going for the 30 mark point question and I'm gonna hopefully smash it so I'm gonna stop the video now I'm gonna do a little time lapse of this and then we'll stop it and see how long it takes the time is now 10.43, so let's see. Okay, so I've done it. Oh my God, it's taken me, oh, way too many pages. I've got one, two, three, four and a half sides of A4 paper. And the time is, half past 11 okay that's not too bad that's 45 minutes that's good timing 45 minutes so I'm going to give myself an hour because that was tough and I, I, I went really really wrong as well so in respiratory rate I started to explain blood pressure for some reason um, and I'm getting confused between blood pressure and heart rate and it's just it's all combining into one so I really really need to revise that part and make sure that I'm getting the right sections in the right bit for heart rate blood pressure respiratory rate and my hand is dead from writing all of that and that is literally just one section of the exam but it is the biggest section so if I can narrow this down and hopefully it's going to be better um but i need to practice basically i need to practice because it just is sitting and you have to think about the, the question you have to think about what you're writing and which baroreceptors it is or is it the baroreceptor is it the juxtala um glomera cells whatever it's called oh so i just need to make sure i don't confuse the baroreceptors and the juxtala glomerular cells however you say it um, because that's what I was getting confused about and um, I was getting confused between heart rate and blood pressure and I was writing the same things over and I was thinking why am I writing I'm repeating myself why am I repeating myself this isn't the same section and I did have to look at as well again I had to get my thing and just remind myself with urine output and why she's got a reduced urine output because in my head it's simple but trying to explain it about the um, glomerular filtrate and the reduced urine and the hydrostatic pressure I need to do some revision on that so I did have to look at that section I'm not gonna lie I had to look and I read it over and like okay let me just write this out so I think 45 minutes writing that isn't too bad and hopefully I can have enough time for the rest of the exam. But if I keep practicing and practicing and practicing, it should sink in and I should remember and hopefully I'm gonna do okay. But yeah, that's knocked my confidence a little bit, I think, because I had to check the urine output and I really panicked between heart rate and blood pressure. But anyway, keep practicing. I've got three weeks and counting till the exam. And hopefully, I'm gonna remember it all by then. If I do this every single day, go over and over and over it, I should remember it by the exam and I should be ready, exam ready in three weeks.